Yesterday we had a big main event at Jeffrey Paris. Can you tell me please uh, what exactly happened in the cage? Oh yeah, at, at the end obviously it was a very unfortunate set of circumstances. Um, you know, uh, uh, Cedric at the beginning of the third round was trying to gesture to me that there's a problem pointing in his foot. Obviously at that point, you know, I can see that there was no foul had taken place. If a foul had taken place, it allows me to stop the action and, and deal with something. If something illegal happened, accidental or not, this was in an uh, open play, as we call it. You know, the fight was progressing. He was gesturing to me that there was a problem. Um, so, and the rules are very clear. You know, a, a fighter cannot, for obvious reasons, a fighter cannot call his own timeout. You know, people are talking about you have timeouts all the time. Yes, we do if a foul occurs. So if a poke in the eye, a groin shot, something like that, you know, equipment malfunction, something, it was none of those things. I'm looking at what I believe to be, obviously in that moment, I believe to be uh, potentially an injury to his foot, could have been his toe, his ankle, could have been anything. So I very clearly said to Cedric, look, please continue fight, don't stop the fight. I think I told him maybe four separate times uh, to, to continue to fight. And at that point, I'm, you know, automatically I'm thinking, who's going to know that there's a splinter in someone's toe? That that was the eventuality of what it was. I'm thinking that there was a potential injury caused to him. And as I say, the rules are very clear. A fighter cannot, we say they cannot avail themselves. They cannot call their own time out for obvious reasons. Regardless of it being a hometown guy, I can't give any special reasoning or favours for fighters. It's very unfortunate. So, in this particular world case, the rules that you apply is that the fighter can stop the fight by himself. Of course. Th those are the, the rules to apply in this moment? Absolutely. A fighter cannot, for obvious reasons, because sometimes it's happened before if a fighter gets hurt, you know, and they go back, it's a potential fight ending scenario, you know? Um, and so if a fighter does get hurt and they signal to the referee they're hurt, <clears throat> that's when we say to them, you know, they can't, for obvious reasons, they can't call their own time out because their opponent uh, should lawfully be allowed to continue and attack them and potentially uh, stop the fight. So it's a very, it's, it's a common sense thing, you know, as, as to the reasons why fighters cannot call their own timeouts. And, you know, in almost 25 years of MMA, it's, I always say be prepared for everything. <clears throat> that's, that's an absolute first that it apparently it's turned out to be something that was stuck in his toe. You know, even, even if I'm stopping the fight to bring in a doctor, I'm going against the protocol. I'm going against the rules at that point for something that I perceive to be potentially a legitimate injury that was caused in by fair play, not by foul. So it was the first time you've seen something like that in the case, but if it does happen again, or do you know, yeah. would you do the thing? I would have to, you know, it's the, and people were talking about uh, the language barrier. There is no language barrier. You know, Cedric talks very good English. We have a conversation before the fight. I go and, um, <clears throat> I go and talk to him uh, in the dressing room. It's normal for us to go to the locker rooms before the fight to talk to the fighters. There is no language barrier. Uh, obviously, you know, we're in the middle of a fight. Just, we call it Sod's Law in England. It happens to be the main event, you know, 16, what, 17,000 people, loud. Um, and he was telling me, my foot, my foot. He's just pointing to his foot. And like I said, at that point, I can't, if I stop that fight there to examine it, I'm doing a disservice potentially to his opponent and I'm going against what the rules and the protocols tell me. And I just can't do it. It's, uh, you know, I feel bad. Uh, it's made me sad. I'm annoyed by the situation, like I said, because it happened to be the main event. I'd feel bad for any fighter in that scenario, but um, I, I'm frustrated and I'm, in, uh, I'm incredibly sad. I'm going to talk to the commission. You know, if the commission wanted to look at it and have a discussion with me, that's they're the authority here. You know, the French MMA Federation. That's who I'm working under here with PFL. And I'll have a conversation with the commission and I, I know pretty much that they are feeling exactly the same way. 
because no rules were broken. I did what I was supposed to do. And obviously in hindsight, which we don't have, you know, afterwards when we find out at that point, it was it something in his toe, etc. You know, how did the how did it get there in his toe? There's a lot more circumstances around this that people don't know as well. I can tell you that much uh, from a procedural point of view. You know, the fact of um, fighters um, uh, making their way to the cage, bare feet, etc. Um, th there's a lot more around it. But like I said, I want the commission to be able to do their thing and do their job. And, uh, you know, like I said, I want to be fair all around. I'm very sad by this. Like I said, without repetition, big fight, main event. Unfortunate to say the very least. So you already said that was the first time you see such an injury, but have you already seen similar cases? Well, it's not an injury, is it? It's not even it. That's what I don't understand. Look, it's when I went. Yeah, I can't because I didn't understand. Obviously, Cedric is a super experienced guy in kickboxing. Obviously, MMA he had a few fights, but a super experienced guy. I don't understand how, you know, when, when, I, when I was competing, I broke bones. You see fighters break bones all the time and, and all carry on in the fight. I didn't understand how, a, if it was a potential splinter in his toe, how that was affecting him in the fight. That's what I can't quite understand. And obviously, you know, in, in the heat of the moment, in, in a main event, like I said, with an arena full of screaming people, no referees were, oh, oh, you mean there's a splinter in your toe? It just didn't work out like that.